Hey, Nails here from On Air Coach. Delighted today to be speaking with Stan Peake. Stan is, well, first of all, an executive coach, but also the founder of uh, the Institute of Performance Coaching in, you're in Calgary, right, Stan? Good afternoon, morning, good evening, good night. Good morning for me. It's, uh, you're in Malta. It's got to be afternoon for you, Nails, but pleasure and thank you for having me. How's Calgary today, by the way? It stops, it stopped winter by now, right? Because we were talking to friends in Winnipeg and they were saying, nope, not yet. Honestly, four days ago, it, yeah. it, we finally have a spring. So the mood is picked up because, you know, these times we are not supposed to be leaving our houses that much. And uh, yeah. to have a nice weather, you can sit in your backyard. Uh, the, the collective mood of the whole city is picked up. It's a beautiful thing. Spring is a beautiful thing. Stan, how, how do you become, uh, go from little Stan Peak to executive coach Stan Peak? Where, where does that, how does that happen? What, what is it inside of a person that, that, that makes them become that in life you know i'd love to say that i had this normally sequential career of successes but honestly it would be adversity and failure that's how i got here do you know what everybody uh, says that we've been talking to so many successful people and they all say hey, bit of luck bit of this bit of that but no plan as such i had a plan when I was uh, probably 18, 19 years old, I had a plan. I was a football player. I was going to play professional football. And then I almost broke my neck. Uh, then I had a plan. I was going to be a really successful fitness trainer. I owned a couple of companies and, and had, a, I had a great and fun 18-year career as a fitness trainer. Got bought out of my second company and went through a washing machine of Emerge. Didn't really love what I was doing anymore. And went through a two year period of just soul suck, trying to find out what I wanted to do next and what I wanted to be when I grew up, uh, only to realize that coaching people had been what I was doing from a fitness standpoint, both as a trainer and as a fitness leader of other fitness trainers for you know close to 20 years, that's what I loved. So other people knew what they wanted to do all along. Uh, for me, every time I knew what I wanted to do, a train hit me and I had to pivot. Isn't it weird because um, you're probably the same as a lot of coaches we talk to, a lot of people in, in this game that we talk to who say, people came to me anyway and just asked me questions or, or, they, or they open up to me and just naturally. And, I, and, I, and I, I, not that I had the answers, but I had good questions for them. And then I realized, hang on, you can get paid for this as well. Oh, I didn't know that. That's a career. You can actually do this. It's, it's, it's a weird feeling that when you think, do you ever feel, or when you're starting out, did you ever feel to yourself, can I actually take people's money for this? Is that not cheating? Like, cause they're just talking. It's a weird way to make a living in a way, right? It, it's funny you say that. And I didn't think I could take money, people's money at first. So what I did when I decided that I might want to be a business coach was while I was going through the rigor of getting certified as an executive coach and a corporate facilitator, I actually called up three entrepreneurs that I know in different industries and said, I will coach you for free mm. for, you know, three to six months so that I can, uh, A, see if I'm any good, mm. see if I love it or not. And most importantly, probably for them is to see if I can show them results. And so when all three grew their businesses and, you know, had a better strategy and had given me testimonials, even referrals, then in 2015, I'm like, well, I'm starting this thing for real. Half of the people we coach are radio people, right? Because that's our background. We've been in radio for 30 years. Tracy, who works with me and myself. And uh, we, when you talk about working for free, sometimes it jars with people to go, I don't know if I want to work for free. But the importance of it is, is, is massive. A lot of the radio people who are starting off, we say, get a gig. It doesn't matter whether they pay you and see if you're any good. Because when you get that first uh, uh, confirmation that, yeah, you're actually good at this. It's a, it's a real buzz, isn't it? It's a, real, it's a great feeling. You must have felt that when, when you started getting that initial feedback. Over the moon. I, I remember I told you I went through that two years of soul suck. And after my first free coach, actually, I should back up. I lied. I charged $1 uh, so that I could frame the Creaming first Creaming it off the top. Creaming it off I the know, top. Right? I know, right? I'm killing it. Killing it. Um, <laughs> If I can, you know, at the rate I'm going right now, I think I'll be re retired about 38 years after I die. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, I, I framed that first dollar and then I, then I did it for free. But to your point, I was over the moon. I went yeah. through two years and not knowing what I was supposed to be doing. And I loved it. And, and one thing I'll say about free, 
is I don't believe in exploiting people. Would I let someone work for free for me? No. Mm. But for those people who can't crack an industry, who it's so unfair, they don't get any breaks, work for free. Yeah. In my first career, I, it took me almost a year to get hired as a fitness professional. Um, and so that's why I just did it for free because no one's stopping you from working for free. And once you've built up your experience and you've built up testimonials, all of a sudden paid gigs are around the corner. Yeah. And I think there's a fine line between, it was my dad that used to say to me, if you work for free, you'll be very, very busy if you keep working for free. So there's that fine line between knowing when to say no to the free because it's great experience. Right. So there's that. And that, that, that I think that's for everybody, not just for coaching. If you're trying to get into any industry, the, the internship became a nice word for getting someone in for free. Right. So, You've also got to know when to stop that, don't you? You do. And I think for coaches, because coaches, I mean, let's be honest, coaching as an industry has exploded in the last you know, decade. Yeah. And, so, and especially in the last two or three years. So what's important and what's challenging for a lot of coaches is to find their differentiators. How are they different? How are they better? Mm. So the advantage of working for free is you're getting, like you said, like your dad said, you're getting more practice than other people faster. And with that practice starts to become your brand, you know, as a coach, I help people finish that sentence. Yeah. And so then you can say, well, here's what my brand promise is. Here's what I'm different or better at. And when you know that that's what you can charge for. Something you're good at is social media, especially LinkedIn. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. I think everybody should be on LinkedIn if you're serious about doing anything. And that's where I first stumbled upon you, right? I think you, you commented on something. I liked the comment. I thought, oh, who's this guy? So I check you out and I go, oh, he's written a book. What's the book? Check that out. And I went deep, 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 in, deep even more. The book is great. It's called Now What? And I just love that. I mean, what a perfect title for nowadays, right? Now what? What are we going to do now after, after this ends or doesn't end or whatever this is going to morph into? Tell us a bit about the book. I mean, how, why, where, and how long did it take you to write the damn thing? Or is it just a load of different ideas that you've been merged in over years? Or how did that come about? Long question, eh, Stan? Long question. Pick one of those. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> I think there was 20 there. Um, well, starting with the book. So uh, I will say this because I have to preface my answer on how long it took. Um, that, so that was my fifth book. And uh, because it was my fifth book, I had prior experience on having a process of writing a book. and knowing why I would write a book and who I write it for. Mm. So, and then the next thing I have to say to preface my answer before people hate me <laughs> is uh, as a business owner, because while I work with entrepreneurs and executives, I run my own business too. Mm. And so as soon as we're not allowed to leave the house, networking, by the way, is one of the best ways for me to grow my business. Of course. Can't leave the house. That's more challenging, not impossible, more mm. challenging. So I started to have my little moment of what am I going to do? And I came to me within probably, you know, a few minutes, if I'm feeling this way, so are my clients. So I started writing an article on ways you can build your business right now, despite, you know, the disadvantages and the challenges. And uh, the fact that we were quarantined meant that I just spent the first three days. So that's how long it took me to write the book is three days. Mm -hmm. I just worked for full days. It was a weekend. But I worked, you know, nine hour, eight to nine hour days, Saturday, Sunday, and then the Monday. And by Monday, I was done. I had to wait a couple extra days for the person who did my book cover to have it done because, you know, that's more of a technical science. Uh, but really, the book was published in a weekend. And I think that was critical and important because there were still people going, what do I do? What do I do? Which is probably why that book became a bestseller. There was a, a, a lady that works in radio, Valerie Geller. She's one of the top consultants in radio. And she was my idol for quite a while when I was working on air daily. And I met her a couple of times, but she always has her book. It's called uh, Powerful Radio. She always has it with her. Everywhere she goes, she brings the book. And, but she says, the book doesn't make me any money, but the book helps me. It opens up doors to other things. I think she made like a, a 10 cents every copy of the book that she sold. So she says, it's not, I'm not going to retire on it. But it's a, it's, a, it's a great way to get people talking, right? It's a great way to get people thinking about you and, and getting their attention. Um, it, it, would you agree with that? Because is that, is that, I've written a few books. They're all just e-books. And the, I, I know I'm not going to make a dime out of them. I'm give, I give most of them away half the time. If you enroll in our course, you get the books. What the heck? You get the books. There's no point in them sitting there. Would you, I, I would agree wholeheartedly. I would think the book is, number one, it's a glorified business card. Yeah, uh, great, And number great. two... 
it is right. It's a glorified business card for a lot of uh, speakers. A lot of coaches end up being, you know, speaking at different events. Mm. And one of the first questions that they'll ask uh, in terms of event organizers is, have you written a book? And if so, what's the book? So like right. when I was still allowed to travel just a couple of months ago, it was amazing because the book got me the speaking engagement, speaking engagement followed by a book signing, book signing and a picture of that on social media got me my next uh, engagement. Love it. So it, it really is one of those, it, it kind of opens a, uh, a floodgates, if you will, on different opportunities. Yeah. And that's honestly, I hate to say it, not even if it's a great book. So yeah. <laughs> it, the key is to write a great book because then if people read it, then that really goes into the second piece and that is conversion. So if someone is going to meet with, you know, myself as a business coach or someone else as a business coach, and we both have good things to say, but someone else has written a book and I haven't, that person just looks more credible and, and they'll probably win more coaching assignments versus me. So having now written five books, mm -hmm. I've established myself as an authority in all the key areas that I help clients, which, you know, took a while, but it's, it's the harder way to decrease your success timeline. I'm a big believer in achieving 10 years of results in two to five years. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think deep down we all are, but a lot of people just don't know how to do that. I think, do you like talking on stage? I, it put me on a stage. You can't get me off a stage, right? I've been on stage since I was four years of age. It's just, I just love it. Do you, do you enjoy doing that? Do you like talking on stage? I love it. I, yeah. I you know, you feel just alive. I, again, I played football before. Um, and so that competitiveness and the feeling so alive, like you're in some sort of arena, mm. being on stage is the closest thing to that. And more important than anything that does for me is the ability to see, you know, a hundred, 500 people in an audience, their eyes lighting up, heads nodding, jotting notes, uh, uh, resonating with what you're saying. I'm on a mission in my career to help 1 million leaders discover their potential. So if I can do that 500 people at a time, I feel great. They feel great. It's a win-win. I love it. I love it. Stan Peek, the book is called Now What? 50 Ways to Build Your Business in a Crisis. Great subtitle on that as well. I love that one as well. Thanks so much for joining us. It was thank a real you. joy, man. And uh, good luck with everything. Niles, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully your audience took some actionable tips out of here today. And uh, just really appreciate you having me and all the work you're doing to help people all over the world.